Of all the interesting 9-11 coincidences, the most intriguing one of all is perhaps the fact that Marvin P. Bush, the brother of President Bush, sat on the board of directors for one of the companies that had security contracts at the World Trade Center from 1993 to June of 2000. Stratasac, formerly known as Securicom, was one of the companies hired after the 1993 World Trade Center bombing to help redesign and integrate the new World Trade Center security system. In October 1996, Securicom received an $8.3 million contract for World Trade Center security work, which, according to its CEO, lasted up until the day the buildings fell down. It's also interesting that in the years leading up to 9-11, Stratasec had security contracts with the organization that managed Dulles Airport, where Flight 77 took off that day, and with United Airlines, which owned two of the other three hijacked planes. But it gets even better than that. Stratasac had also run security for Los Alamos National Laboratories, where at the time scientists were developing super thermite explosives of the type that had been found in the World Trade Center dust. Debunkers have used the fact that Bush left the company in June 2000, over a year before 9-11, to conclude that he could not possibly have had anything to do with the 9-11 attacks or the apparent explosive controlled demolition of the World Trade Center buildings. But what about the fireproofing upgrades on the exact floors coinciding with impact and failure on 9-11, which according to the NIST report, took place in the three years leading up to 9-11? And what about the other Stratasec employees who stayed on? Not very much, if anything, is ever said about them. The CEO of Stratasec was a guy named Wirt Dexter Walker III, a distant Bush cousin from the Herbert Walker line, with an interesting history of managing what appear to be CIA front companies. That is, they all go bankrupt while Wirt still stays in business. Stratasec itself also appears to have been a CIA front company. It too went bankrupt shortly after 9-11 and has some very suspicious investors and board of directors. A guy named Barry W. McDaniel was the chief operating officer for Stratasec. Barry McDaniel came from BDM International as a black operations material logistics and management specialist working under Frank Carlucci of the Carlyle Group the Bush Bin Laden Business Partnership. Prior to working at BDM, McDaniel had worked as a military ordnance distributor at Fort Belvoir, a facility with many links to 9-11, including the terrorist tracking program Able Danger and the terrorist trainer Ali Muhammad. No known public images exist of Wirt Dexter Walker nor Mr. McDaniel. Any good investigator will tell you, always keep your eye on the suspect. And until now, these two have been virtually invisible. That all needs to change. There is enough evidence available to convict Wirt Dexter Walker of criminal insider trading with regards to 9-11. So why then did Martha Stewart go to prison for insider trading and not Wirt Dexter Walker? Well, according to the SEC and the 9-11 Commission, it was because Wirt and Barry had no ties to terrorism or other negative information. Many other researchers beg to differ. Wirt Walker was also a managing director at Kuwaiti American Corporation, which was the parent company of Stratasec. He was the son of a career U.S. intelligence officer and a former co-worker of William Casey, who later became CIA director. Walker was also a descendant of James Monroe Walker, who ran the business of the U.S. deep state organization called Russell and Company. Coincidentally, the brother-in-law of the original Wirt Dexter Walker, John Wellborn Root, was the longtime employer of Emery Roth, whose company was later the architect of record for both the World Trade Center Towers and Building 7. Overall, Stratasec and its parent company, Kuwaiti American Corporation, had some interesting links to royalty in both Iran and Kuwait. Some of the company's directors also had connections to U.S. intelligence agencies, and at least one was associated with the CIA-funded terrorist financing network that included BCCI, or the Bank of Credit and Commerce International. Through these links, we can see that the origins of the War on Terror are related to the origins of the first Gulf War and to a private network of covert operatives that stretches back for generations. In fact, the 1991 Gulf War was started on the basis of a lie told by a 15-year-old girl named Naira, who happened to be the daughter of the majority owner of Kuwaiti American Corporation's first cousin. The girl lied about having witnessed Iraqi soldiers taking babies out of incubators and leaving them on the cold floor to die. 
It was later learned that her testimony was false and that she had been coached to tell these lies by the public relations firm Hill and Knowlton. Kuwait is seen to have benefited from 9-11 by the invasion of Iraq and the ouster of Saddam Hussein, a job the first Bush never finished. Stratasec started off in 1987 as Burns and Rowe Securicom, founded by Nelson Rockefeller's assistant, Sebastian Cassetta. The company changed its name to Securicom when it was taken over by Kuwaiti American Corporation, or Kuam, in 1992, at which time Wirt III became the CEO. When Wirt III was sued by the president of an existing company with an identical name, Wirt became abusive and told the other businessman that he would bury him financially and take everything he had by filing a barrage of frivolous arguments in multiple jurisdictions. Wirt lost the case and had to change his company's name to Stratasec. The company motto, securing the planet from global chaos, sounds a bit ironic given the fact that Stratasec is one of the primary suspects for the planting of explosives inside the buildings on 9-11, given the fact that they had direct access to both the World Trade Center and nanothermite technologies. If the truth movement could converge and unify on demanding an investigation, interrogation, and prosecution of these key individuals, whom we already have more than enough evidence to convict in any court of law that isn't run by the same perpetrators of the original cover-up, it would start a chain reaction that could expose the entire 9-11 lie once and for all. But all that depends on whether anyone is paying attention and whether they decide to pick up this information and do something with it. A good start would be to get some of our people, such as the We Are Change groups, to help us track down and take some photographs of these shadowy individuals, maybe even confront them head-on with some tough questions. So I'll tell you where these people might be found today. Barry W. McDaniel now works for a company called LS2 Global Operating Systems Incorporated. The last known address of LS2 is listed on their website as 11,710 Plaza American Drive, Suite 2000, Reston, Virginia, which is just outside of D.C. Recently, I put together a graphic exposing these people in a 9-11 suspects lineup that was posted to the We Are Change Facebook page and Jesse Ventura's Conspiracy Theory page. Within a few hours of that image being posted and receiving many thousands of likes and shares, Barry McDaniel's company, LS2 Global, pulled their website. Since there was no direct connection to the website from that image, it's unlikely that it was due to an increase in internet traffic which caused the shutdown. To me, it looks like they're hiding. An archived version of that site will be provided in the description of this video. Barry W. McDaniel can also be found on LinkedIn and, not surprisingly, is connected to some very suspicious people and companies. First off, his profile says that he was the former vice president of Northrop Grumman from 1989 to 1998. But I think McDaniel lists Northrop Grumman only because BDM, where he and Carlucci worked, was bought out in 1997 by TRW and then sold in 2002 to Northrop Grumman. He never actually worked for Northrop Grumman as far as anyone who's researched his background can tell. It looks like he just doesn't want people to know that he worked for BDM. This reminds me of Grant Green, the Sears World Trade guy who hides his employment at IPAC, SWT, and who is in charge of the visa program allegedly used by the alleged hijackers, i.e. Grant's bureau gave the hijackers their visas. If you read Kevin Ryan's article on that, you'll see that there is strong suspicion that McDaniel was involved in the Iran-Contra crimes along with Carlucci when he ran the U.S. Army's Arms Material Readiness Center. Of course, Barry McDaniel's background makes him the perfect candidate for coordinating the demolition work in secret. I mean, he's a material logistics and management specialist. McDaniel's LinkedIn also claims that he is a manager at WSI Group International, LLC a Homo Sasa, Florida company, yet if you look up the address on Google, you find it's a private residence in the middle of a swamp. A few more interesting facts worth mentioning before I end this video. The office is at Hangar 8 in Oklahoma City's Wiley Post Airport, where Wirt Dexter Walker's aviation businesses were all located, is now occupied by the guy who gave Zacharias Musawi his flight training. Just another amazing coincidence. Also, in the years leading up to 9-11, both Stratasec and Aviation General convened their annual shareholders' meetings in Kuam's Watergate offices in Suite 900. As of 1998, the building was owned by the Blackstone Group, which includes Larry Silverstein and Maurice Greenberg of AIG. As many of you know, AIG was the parent company for the other World Trade Center security firm, Kroll Associates.
and the offices that Kuwam occupied were leased by the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia. The offices just below Kuwam in Suite 800 were occupied by the Saudi Embassy. If you check the source materials and additional articles I'll be linking to in the description of this video, you'll find plenty of other interesting connections and coincidences. I encourage everyone to share this information as widely as possible so that we can get the truth out and demand justice and accountability. It's time to take the truth movement to the next level. <laughs>